good morning to all let us start this fdp good morning good morning to one and all present here first of all i would like to thank god almighty then i thank our management and our principal sir for giving an opportunity to conduct with three days faculty development program on technologies for effective teaching learning and evaluation then i thank our hod ma'am dr dr jagakumari pula vasundi ma'am she is always motivate us and provide her rich experience for conducting such type of meeting in a good manner thank you ma'am in this august occasion on behalf of our department i am very happy to welcome you all for this faculty development program first of all i would like to welcome our resource person dr k arunadev ma'am assistant professor of cs pg krishna jayanti college autonomous bangalore for providing speech on innovative digital tools for teaching and learning teaching learning and evaluation welcome you ma'am and also i would like to thank our chief guest for accepting our invitation and spending her precious time with us once again i welcome you ma'am then i welcome our participants from menti colleges of anjaw and participants from various other colleges welcome you all participants then i welcome our hod ma'am and our colleagues for this program last but not least i welcome you all for this three days faculty development program welcome you all thank you top center center welcome of department dr j jagakumari diula vasandi ma'am to deliver a presidential address a yeah, pleasant good morning to one and all present here i welcome you all for this three day faculty development program on technologies for effective teaching learning and evaluation we are organizing this kind of program for the development of the faculty members and this fdp is organized under the scheme parama scheme provided by UGC for promoting quality initiatives among the colleges and specially this scheme is meant for making the un uh, aggregated colleges into aggregated colleges and this kind of activities or this kind of programs are making the colleges to get into NAC because nowadays nac aggregation is mandatory for all the institution higher education institution to get various funding from government both central as well as state government so we all know the essential for getting to the nac aggregation and under the parama scheme not only for the menti colleges for all the colleges throughout the india we are organizing this kind of faculty development program to promote them in the quality assurance as well as in qualitative initiatives to be done by their heis and today's chief guest dr arna devi ma'am is accepting our invitation and going to deliver a talk on how to prepare very good e content using various digital tools so this is very helpful for the teachers nowadays in this pandemic since we are going the teaching process through online mode so definitely this will help you for all and have a very good interaction with the resource person she is ready to give you all the sorts of help through this session and i wholeheartedly welcome you ma'am and thank you and also i record my sincere thanks and gratitude to our college management principal iqc coordinator for providing this very good golden opportunity for our department to organize this kind of fdps now i hand over the session to the organizers thank you one and all thank you ma'am i would like to welcome mr kamal ma'am to deliver the chief guest address okay uh, good morning all it's my immense pleasure to welcome our today's chief guest dr k arna devi ma'am welcome you ma'am uh, she had a Uh, 19 plus years of experience teaching experience uh, 
she completed her uh, engineering graduate in Webco Shillong Engineering College, Sivahasi, and MCA degree in Alhapa University. And she had completed her PhD in Mother Teresa Women's University. Uh, she was awarded as a Staff of the Year 2009 to 2010. And Novel Research Academy awarded her as a Best Women Faculty in the Year 2021 to 2022. And she got IBM badges on Python for data science and apply data science with Python level 2. Uh, she has been resource person for 60 plus sessions in national as well as international level programs. Uh, she has filed and published a Indian uh, patent titled IoT and RFID based uh, optimal positioning of autonomous shock absorber for smart vehicles. And uh, she has acted as a, a resource person for uh, more than 62 various programs and she has attended 98 uh, courses like current trends in image processing and algorithm, mobile computing and data mining, 3D animation, middleware uh, and uh, she has acted as a university uh, in positions in uh, she's an examiner uh, for Madhuri Kamaraj University and Alhapa University and a question setter for uh, Fatima College, Majura College, Government Arts and Science College, Coimbatore and a member in uh, Board of Engineering in various colleges and she has served as a special services to the institutions like uh, she is an active member in IQAC and member of editorial board reviewer, membership in academic professional bodies and executive member in Women Cell and advisor in NSS unit and a coordinator in a national workshop and a coordinator in others various forums also. Welcome you ma'am. Thank you ma'am. Sharing is caring. They say sharing happens only when the giver and taker are happy to do so in a cloud nine. Now I call upon our chief guest, Dr. K. Aruna Devi, ma'am, to deliver a session. Uh, good morning, one and all. I hope I'm audible to all of you. Ah. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, it's very happy uh, to be with you all, you know, through this uh, FTP. Uh, I, I'm really very thankful to Ayanada Janagamal College Management and uh, especially the IQAC and the Vasanti ma'am for so many other reasons. Uh, I could list out few reasons now. I need to record it because, uh, you know, nowadays every college uh, uh, has geared up for NAC practices, uh, you know, NAC accreditation and all. So, like in even in uh, Bangalore, uh, you know, I work for Krishna Jayanti College. So there also, you know, when we started with our NAC work, so the main challenge was, uh, you know, how to bring in ICT practices and all. So we used to refer a lot of web pages. We used to refer other colleges and how they are, uh, you know, uh, implementing all these ICT uh, practices in their own college. So one of the uh, inspiring profiles for me was, uh, you know, Ayanadar Janaglamal College is uh, CETEL. So CETEL portal, I really admired. I told Vasanti ma'am also uh, regarding the same. So ma'am also has given me a lot of input. Uh, so I'm really thankful to you ma'am. Thank you so much. So, uh, and I'm so happy to give this opportunity also. Uh, it's uh, really giving me a lot of happiness. And I thank uh, Shanmuga Priya ma'am for giving an elaborate introduction and uh, Thanga Adarshana for nicely doing MC. So, uh, with this joy, actually, you know, we it's going to be like a kind of interactive session, I felt, uh, because, you know, uh, though we are talking about this teaching learning methods and ICT and all the things, you know, for the past four or five years, recently, too, for the past two years, everybody were, uh, you know, forced to fall into this kind of practices. So I thought maybe you, you may, I, I don't know about each and every one of you because we are not meeting. I could not see your video. So I don't know whether you are already a master in it or you are a beginner in it. So I, uh, I thought, okay, let me begin with the level zero. Let me address to the person 
uh, you know who are still in the beginner level so let's have a small kind of uh, interactive session slowly and then let us explore the easiest way of implementing the ICT practices. Uh, why I said easiest is like there are there may be so many sessions everybody are attending even uh, you know the past uh, uh, two years even I attended plenty of sessions uh, because it's a privilege earlier to attend session we need to go we need to travel and then we need to take OD uh, and we need to pay a registration fee. But recently we are getting a, uh, you know, it's a boon to the teaching community. Uh, you know, sitting at home, we can attend all the sessions. We can learn uh, to eminent speakers across the globe. So even I attended so many sessions. So people will be listing some 200 tools, 300 tools, even 1000 tools, create video like this, do the animation, do a panel discussion. So many things we actually discussed. We have seen also, but I don't, uh, you know, it, but what is my actually perception is, uh, see, it is not only the e-content creation, but we teachers are, uh, you know, doing other services also to the college. I hope you all are holding nice positions in the college. So we don't have only the teaching responsibility. We have many other responsibilities. Right. So with all the responsibility and I have to create e-content means it's really a challenge. Most of the times we are actually spending our own time. So what is our own time? Our personal time. Right. We don't work for nine o'clock to four o'clock. Even after the college hours, we are sitting and we are doing so many, uh, uh, you know, teaching uh, works and uh, uh, you know, what do you say, uh, lecture material preparations, paper corrections, and other committee works, everything. So in that case, what is the strategy? How do I find out easiest way? I need to create an effective e-content also. What tool can I use? Should I learn the tool? Should I go for a training? Should I attend online course? These are the questions every one of us were having past two years. So I am going to start from that point. So let me share the screen. Uh, I, I, I hope you can uh, stop me anytime. Uh, don't think that, okay, I, only I have this problem. Maybe others didn't ask, so I will not ask. Don't think that way because uh, since we are all teachers, we know very well the challenge in taking online classes. Uh, so I repeat again since I couldn't see you. So please, in between, you just acknowledge me. In between, you tell me how I am going. The progress is fine or not. Okay, so I hope you will do it for me. So with that note of thanks, I will start sharing my screen. Okay. So I'm sharing my entire screen. And yeah. Okay, I hope you can see my presentation. Okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes, ma'am. Ah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So uh, our FDP, the focus is on the technologies for effective teaching, learning, and evaluation. And the topic of this session is innovative tools for teaching and learning. So let's first start with what is actually, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the expectation of a student on teaching learning because when we say teaching learning it is a student teacher relationship what actually the students are expecting nowadays they actually want a happy learning they want it has to be very very easy subject has to be interesting they want to get some excitement and also some awards and rewards some kind of appreciation either in terms of marks or if if it is not marked some kind of chocolate, you give smiley also our students are very happy, right? So some kind of rewards, appreciation, awards. So these are small, small expectations of a student while learning. So they ultimately want a happy learning, okay? But according to our NAC perception or according to the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the national prescription, what is actually, uh, how the teaching method should be? It is, it should be, uh, you know, kind of innovative teaching method because they say uh, we need to identify the potential of the student and address accordingly. It means that student level identification and after the student level identification, then 
change the mode of teaching so try uh, try for innovative teaching methods students want interesting learning method and nak is suggesting teachers to go for innovative teaching method so how that innovative teaching method can be we are generally happy with our blackboard or green board whatever it is board teaching we generally feel when we write we feel that it is going into our mind and we also tell the students also the same way to so take a notebook and write what is there on the board then you will remember right so this was the traditional methodology we call it as chalk and board or lecture method or however it is and then slowly we have moved into the presentation method where we will present the same contents in the projector to the students and the students will read it or listen to it and then we we also discuss about the particular topic right so this was the methodology now the methodology is slowly navigated so into what so nak is suggesting that learner centric teaching methodology should concentrate on participatory learning not only that experiential learning problem solving ict methods and of course together let it be a innovative teaching method these are the keyword those who are uh, you know the, which are the colleges they are preparing for nat you all will remember these words the college will be asking you to give a document proof for experiential learning methods participatory learning method or ict method right so i thought i will spend some time and then i will move on to the uh, you know tools to create these methodologies can anyone help me uh, have you ever heard about these keywords uh, and how you have applied in your college can anybody tell me any one of this in this particular uh, circle uh, uh, innovative teaching method experiential learning ict participatory learning learner centric student friendly all these keywords yes we actually have it and we do this way we document this way we tell the teachers to prepare this way can anybody uh, i think i could not see the chat window but uh, somebody if you can unmute i think right uh, how do i go to the window yeah i want at least some responses so that i can proceed you can unmute yourself and you can tell me how the teaching learning methods are categorized how it is applied in your college they can also use the chat box ah uh, yes vijay kumar sir uh, vijay kumar sir or r o jo peter madam ah sir um, yes madam it is a purely student centric method okay, oh, okay. yes madam okay. uh, how how you are actually doing in uh, your college oh uh, yeah yeah you yeah. were in our college we are following several methods uh, <laughs> for example uh, tutorial seminars and role play project uh, internship uh, yes, sir. something yes, sir. so so in our college especially we are following ob methodology so ah okay. uh, yeah we purely follow on student centric method especially the learning okay okay thank you so much lauren sir thank you sir so i'm happy uh, uh, we will continue so as i told you first uh, you know we will uh, so as i told you let's continue with the uh, uh, you know the student centric methods so sir said they are actually using they are following the obe outcome based education right and they follow purely student centric method so what is actually the student centric method it is categorized into three first is participatory teaching learning where we can use uh, you know and display of fundamental knowledge or concept the teachers will use or they display the fundamental knowledge so how i can do it we can have interactive lectures we can conduct quiz to evaluate we can have flipped classroom so flip classroom is we give the topic uh, one day or one week prior to the class we can ask them to prepare and come and then speak right 
and then webinars we can also have some webinars from outside or seminar kind so recently since we are using the word webinar i have written here as webinar so we can conduct some session where experts will come and talk on the subject and we can also have uh, you know panel discussions so panel discussion in the sense so we can take up some topic and we can have a discussion so with the panel discussion the either uh, you know uh, we can have some we can call some students and we can prepare them to present in the panel discussion and the entire class will listen to it so since they are actually participating they are listening this methodology we call it as participatory teaching learning so just like panel discussion we can also have debate we can have student seminar one minute presentations toggle talks we can have some demonstration poster presentation technical presentation and guided library work business lab peer teaching so these are some of the things i have listed which in our college we are using so in this methodology if you take the teachers contribution will be more and the students contribution is participation they just participate so the second methodology is experiential teaching learning where the students will learn by doing themselves and they reflect what actually they have learned so in the participatory they have learned something so whatever they have learned they are using to create something is the experiential teaching learning so this can be exhibited by exhibition we can tell our students to create something and then to exhibit and similarly we can take the students to industry or field visit where they see whatever they have studied they get an experience in the field itself so they see that this is how it is happening and then attending meetups so meetups are nothing but some of the seminars or some of the industrial uh, visits arranged by the company itself the company will call, uh, call particularly in cities this is happening the company will say i am conducting a seminar on one particular day for one hour so the student can go visit the company have a experiential learning and attend the session also then they can also participate in mock talk workshops they can create project they can create publications they can uh, you know be part of the role play and they can also write a review about book or article or even about a uh, media that is we can have a uh, movie review also then they can also produce a media it can be audio or a video or a movie also and creating some models conducting some social survey survey then they can also simulate suppose they are not able to create something they can create some models and the scenario mapping they can map some scenario and they can explain they can learn what it is and then some of the project development since we belong to computer science i have mentioned website or app development or any program development and then social campaign so they can take up one real time problem statement and they can see how that can be solved with the domain knowledge and they can conduct a campaign on it and the last method that is the third method we call it as the problem solving teaching learning method so here in problem solving what actually we do we apply a method or strategy to a particular problem it means what so we uh, generally in class we give one problem to student and we will ask them to solve this mathematical problem so not only mathematics based on the domain any problem can be taken and we can tell the student to identify the solution so with that the student can use critical thinking ability and he will try to solve it so what type of problems and what type of activity we can do so i have given the activities which we use in our college a case study or water chemical analysis content analysis budget analysis business plan creation and presentation financial statement analysis and subject related exercises we can also suggest them uh, you know uh, you know we can also make them to work by giving worksheet or workbook and then debugging troubleshooting circuit design program writing execution market research 
brainstorming, cause and effect analysis, test and learn, root cause analysis, optimization, research paper, or poster presentation. So these are the categories we can identify. During the class itself, we can conduct these activities. We can create a small report and keep it ready. So we can claim that we are using student-centric methods by suggesting these methods. So uh, did I miss any methods here? I, I want to get suggestions from you. Did I miss any methods? If you have any other methods in your uh, uh, mind, can you, can, you, can you put it in the chat window? Any other methods? I'll, I'll stay for a minute to get response from you. Any other teaching learning method? Yes, good sir. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, thanks, and uh, happy to be part of this uh, program. I'm actually uh, Dr. Vairamuthu from Ellur Institute of Technology, Chodia okay. for Beta Computer Science and Engineering. So you have been uh, giving uh, enormous inputs on uh, various aspects of uh, curriculum, right? So experiment or experiential or participative learning, as part of which we in VIT in our curriculum. We have a fully flexible credit system. So it means that students are going to be participating in deciding the course. They are going to be participating in deciding the list of courses they are going to study in the next semesters. So we are going to start from that process where they are going to record their wish list for the forthcoming semesters. And the based on the wish list, we are going to shortlist the courses. And based on the available resources, we are going to offer that. This is the very first step. And coming wow. to the concept of curriculum, in our curriculum, we have additional component uh, other than uh, uh, lecture, uh, tutorial, as well as practical. Uh, we have some embedded project, J component. So that is going to be part of uh, some of the major or niche domains, which will facilitate innovations. They may introduce some kinds of uh, a team project. Teamwork is also uh, facilitated. As part of this particular uh, component, uh, more and more students are attracted towards a particular uh, course and they come up with the innovations and they go for startup. That's the next case. And as part of our curriculum, we have one more course called Technical Answers to Real World Problems. So it's a very kind of completely a project which is going to be part of their uh, credit also. So each and every student as an individual or as a team is expected to identify a societal issue and they have to propose either in the form of process or product or a framework or a working uh, simulation be whatever the ideas for the solution is they are supposed to be involved themselves in solving or addressing the societal issue so these are some of the practices which we inculcate in uh, the curriculum of VIT. I hope I, I was in another call, so I, I was not able to participate in the first discussion. Mm -hmm. and I, I hope I, I have added some points to with you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, with, sir. With yes, sir. Thank you. Thank Perfectly. You. I'm happy to get your points. So, sir is saying that you have a kind of proper courses kind. The student can pick the courses which he is interested in. And even in the course also, he is not only learning, he is implementing, experiencing that way, right? It's really a good way of, you know, uh, you know, giving inputs to the students from, you know, uh, as a, uh, you know, responsible uh, department, as a res responsible college. We are doing it seriously. We are very happy about it, sir. Appreciations to you and uh, 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 the department also. So uh, I think uh, uh, the societal problem, taking it and implementing it. So that is one of the nice activity or one of the nice projects we can tell the students. So thank you, sir. And Pani Silvan, sir, uh, do you have something to say? I could see your raised hand. Okay. So, uh, 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 sir, may join. Ah, uh, yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. So maybe, sir, maybe Jamie after a few minutes. Okay, so we will proceed. So uh, why I have uh, listed out all these activities is, so since we started talking about the teaching learning and teaching learning tools, I just wanted to show you this. 
and i wanted to say that how we deliver the contents you know that is one area but then making the student to experience and making the student to work becomes a major part of it so that is why we call this as a student centric method so uh, let us not worry about it so let us concentrate on how to share this uh, you know knowledge with our students so since we already have experienced all these online classes you know work from home options online meetings we are having now also we are in online meeting webinars virtual fdks we are part of it either we are delivering or we are attending and then online courses quiz conference everything become online for a teacher now so now ict is a, uh, you know is, there is no doubt that ict is a uh, you know separate entity it is a integral part of a teacher so uh, e learning becomes you know a common for a, a teacher during this pandemic period so what actually we started doing we started utilizing the electronic technologies and so that the curriculum is brought outside of the traditional classroom so no longer uh, you know uh, we are not worried if the classroom is not there we can manage so i'm not saying without classroom we can manage but i'm saying that we have found one alternate also we can actually run the classes right so it means that even though we are not physically sitting and attending we will be able to learn something so the need for uh, expectations of the e learning is first of all it should be technologically friendly so most of the teachers i can i i may belong to computer science department but i cannot expect every teachers to be master in technology but all the teachers can contribute technology but the technology has become very very simple for everyone to understand even small kids are using uh, mobiles and tabs they are only automatically joining the zoom meetings and google meetings nothing in the classes putting the messages in the chat window giving online examinations right so the technology has been brought into uh, you know a simple level so that everybody can participate so uh, that makes us you know we see and to be uh, you know uh, uh, not only the teacher friendly it has also become you know learner friendly environment we are able to give due to this e learning framework so what is the core component of a e learning framework so when i say e learning we are not sitting inside the classroom we are connected through a virtual component so now also we are in a meeting so what is the important thing which we connect actually so you can see the video but uh, not only the video the main focus is on the presentation what i have shared with you so whatever i am saying i am giving you one audio input as well as one presentation also so this presentation maybe the uh, whatever i speak it may go to a recording that video may be available with you on a later stage so what are the uh, takeaways of this session you may get a video the video includes the audio whatever uh, you know we had a discussion and then we are also getting the you know the visual presentation also so in this actually this is the material this is the resource this is the knowledge so in what are the formats the information can be there it could be in the form of a book audio video it could be even in the form of database web pages etc so when i say all these are digital components where these components can be kept it has to be stored right we know very well to store one file you need a pen drive you need somewhere you need to put it in email you need to put it in a system so if you want to make this globally available then what actually we can do so we can go for a concept called as repository so what do you mean by repository is a big storage area where we can keep all the resources all the study materials all the notes everything even exercises simulation tools so anything which is relevant to a particular course the uh, e materials we can keep it in the repositories so we have national repositories even in the institute in our own institution level or the college level we can create repositories we can create a storage space and we can maintain nowadays colleges are coming with the concept digital library where we keep all the study materials and make it available for the students 
So it is in the institutional level or it can be accessible to the national level. And apart from that, we can go to the open educational resources level. So today I'm going to throw more focus on this open educational resources, wherein whatever the e-contents I have, I'm not only sharing to my own students, I want to make it visible to entire globe, entire world. So first of all, I should be knowing what are the type of e-resources I can actually create. So the first thing is I can have online courses. So when I say online courses, what do you mean by that? You will, the moment when I say e-resources, all comes to mind is video lecture and all. So that is actually the unit of these resources. So the resources are nothing but it comes with one bundle, right? It comes with one bundle. Like I say that book, the book will have everything. The book will have the uh, 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 explanations. The book will have the question bank. The book also will have some case study, everything together in a format, right? So the same way, it is a complete package available readily for learning a particular subject. So it can be an online course. It can be a courseware, ebook, e-journal, sometimes software. So software is, I'm not saying C, C++, Java. It can be a software related to your own subject. And thesis and dissertations, even school. So the school, when I say, I try to mean the virtual school and virtual environment. So now we are going to see inside the uh, you know, e-resources, what are the components are there. So if you know the component, then we can make the component ready and put it together and make it accessible, right? So e-content is nothing but electronic component. It's a bits and pieces of your e-resources. It can be in any format. It can be any format. And sometimes it can be accessible when uh, you go online. Sometimes even if we are in offline, it can be available in our computer or mobile also. So nowadays, when we say, uh, you know, this e-content, e-resource, we always, uh, you know, uh, don't mean only computer. We include computer, mobile phone, tablets, and other personal de uh, devices, right? Okay. So we have already seen the uh, need for the e-content, why it is actually needed. Because now also, after the session, suppose you want to refer something, then you can go back to the material and you can refer. So that can be used for a sustainable purpose. So when the key content is available, uh, you know what happened? This, it is actually a self-instructional, it become a self-instructional model of teaching where the, uh, you know the teacher, uh, without the presence of a teacher, the student can learn. And when, the, when he is meeting the teacher, he can ask the doubts and other discussion. And nowadays, even in the uh, online courses, we have the forums wherein we can discuss with the teacher regarding the assignment or regarding the question paper. So there are a lot of forms of e-content which we can actually create something like, uh, you know, uh, it includes text, picture, audio, animation, video can be included together to create a simulation or a presentation or a simple word file also. So now let's start. So I wanted actually, uh, how uh, today I thought of doing this, I wanted to share with you like how I had an experience, how I, I created an e-content and how I have made it as an open educational resources. So I wanted to share this experience with a simple tool. I, I'm not going for a very complex tool, but with a simple tool, how I can do it, I wanted to demonstrate you. So let me share with you how I actually started creating. So the first thing is when I say we have to create an e-content. First of all, we need to be very, very clear with the objective and the course design. So one plan is you can take the entire subject and then you can convert into e-content. But then I suggest you to start with a small module. Take up one module, take up one unit and see how that can be done. So when we are starting, what actually we can do is we can first utilize the formats we are already familiar. So what do you mean by familiar? So I want to show you this thing. Uh, yeah, I can show you. So uh, what do you see here? What do you see here? Can someone tell me what do you see here? Yeah, 
the index page okay the index page so i can see it i can see that there are some 19 pages and it is saying r for data science and unit 4 and 5 this is a simple class notes and i can see the index page is listed down and the moment when i go over the index page i can see there is a hyperlink right can you see the hyperlink yeah there is a hand icon right so what happens is now let me click on this anova then i am able to navigate to the page anova so i can directly go into the contents of anova similarly when i click on sort function i am directly moving into the sort function detail Uh, uh, you know, you may not be familiar with the subject. Not, not at all a problem. I wanted to show you that this is one simple PDF file with having some index and with a hyperlink, right? So, can you tell me how actually uh, you know you have achieved this kind of uh, indexes and how you have made these kind of hyperlinks earlier? What type of softwares you have used and how were you able to achieve a simple hyperlink? because when i'm giving a student a simple notes so i don't want to uh, create a website or something but i want to give a simple pdf with proper index and with hyperlinks to the pages how that can be done how generally we do it can you share it with me come on have you uh, i think you would have done have you tried it at least you tell me have you tried it Yes, ma'am. I had already uh, ah. tried with some uh, PDF file. I yeah. have a commercial PDF editor. I I have added some mm -hmm. links with the documents, so that will also facilitate. Mm -hmm. Or uh, we can also use uh, LaTeX. Uh, with mm -hmm. the help of LaTeX, you can also go for uh, structuring and uh, you can formulating the hyperlink. Anything is possible with LaTeX also. But it is very simple mm -hmm. in PDF. My opinion is maybe you can yes, do it sir. in the PDF. include the links with the uh, microsoft word and convert them into simple pdf that is also will uh, that also will work fine yes sir yes sir yes sir that is what i wanted to hear uh, anyone else anyone else vairamuthu sir is very active come on please join i remember one more sir also uh, please anyone I want to hear from other teachers how actually we were doing it because uh, sir was telling about the software LaTeX. Actually, it is good, but uh, uh, you know, uh, for our non-computer science teachers, you know, uh, to learn and then to implement, maybe it is a little time-consuming, right? Yeah. So, any other uh, softwares or how you generally do it? Good morning, ma'am. It's Bharti Prashal from the Timnak Institute of Technology. Yes, ma'am. Actually, what I've seen is your is a good idea. Usually, what we do is mm -hmm. like, uh, like suppose we're taking in a Google Classroom or Team. So mm -hmm. there is an option to uh, give them the class material. So mm -hmm. like, I what what personally I do is like today I have a class. So with the date, I'll put the notes only for the. Uh, like it's like today is the class day one. So mm -hmm. for day one, this date, what notes I have taken? But what do you have suggested here is a good idea because entire unit I can compile in one file. Suppose mm -hmm. I am giving them daily notes, but at the end of the unit I can compile it with the hyperlink as you have suggested. So even we can generate like this. So for the entire unit, the student may have only one common notes instead of referring to the daily notes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So, ma'am is sharing everyday notes. That's really a great effort, Bharti ma'am. Appreciations uh, because we know very well earlier we are familiar with how handwritten notes. Now we are putting lot of efforts in creating the documents. So, what actually we are moving into the next level is after creation, what actually we can do. So, I can show you a simple demonstration with a word and how I have actually done. So, uh, even our Vairamuthu sir was also telling we can do with word and PDF. Or if professionally, if you wanted LaTeX, so I know this work you would have done during your thesis work also. Okay, so let me take one small example here. So I'll go for a file, and I'll take a uh, the same file which I showed to you. So yeah, it's opening here. Yeah. So this file, when you look at it, you can see uh, I have not typed all these things. I have not generated all these things. I'm going to show you in five minutes how to generate this index. 
So now let me tell you, I'm deleting this entire table. Okay. So now you can see this is my notes. So when I see this notes, you can see that in the left hand side, can you see the same title? For example, T test in R. And here also you can see T test in R. What is T test? ANOVA. What is ANOVA? Data set performing one way to. So all these things are you what we have actually done. I'll tell you what actually we have done. So when you compile your notes like this, so there are some uh, titles, right? You you can see the heading of the particular note. For example, P test in R. So this is going to be the title. The same title I wanted to be displayed in the first page also. So I don't want to type it again and I don't want to generate the page number again. So what I'm going to do is this is my notes. So first I'm selecting the title. Okay. And this is a very simple Microsoft Word. And there is an option called as references. So I'm going to the references. In that, there is an option called table of contents. Can you see this table of contents, all of you? Someone please acknowledge. Yes, yes ma'am, you can see. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. So here you can see table of contents. So these menus are going to be used to generate the table of contents for us, right? So in that actually there is a there is an option add text. So I'm going to click on this add text and it says that the text can be put in any one of the three levels. What are the three levels, right? Whenever we write the table of contents, we will see uh, section 1, section 1.1, section 1.1.1, right? That are the three levels, right? So, in which level I want the T test in R to come? So, I want this to come in level 1. So, what I have to do is I have to select this, go to add text and then select level 1. Okay. And here, what is T test? This one I wanted to come in level 2. So, I can select this. I can go to add text and then I can make it level 2. By default, nothing will be there. By default, if you select something, see if I am selecting the text, and I'm going to add text, nothing here. Level 1, level 2, level 3, nothing is there. Only we have do not show in the table of content. So I'm selecting here level 2. So this is level 1, this is level 2. Like that, we can select all the titles. So this ANOVA, I want it to be in level 1. So I should go to add text, make it level 1. Then what is ANOVA? I can select it, I can go and can make it level 2. Like that for all the entire notes. I have prepared entire notes. After preparing, this is a kind of packaging book. So after preparing, we can go select the text and you can give levels. So one after another, when you give level, what happens? It will start coming up like this. What is this? This is navigation. Where do I find this? By default, it will not be there in the world. How do I see the navigation? Go to view, click on view and then navigation thing you can select this and you can see this right okay so now i have already applied level one level two for all the headings and it is made ready now let me go back here and how do i create the table of content so i have gone to the first page and then what you can do is again you go to references and see we have done add text and then we made them as level one level two now go to table of contents, click on it and you can see that some templates are already available. Contents, table of contents and manual table like that we have some content. Now let me pick the second option. So I am going to pick the second option. The moment when I give second option, what happens? The table of contents are generated along with the page number. In front of you only, I have deleted the entire table content. And now, I am able to retrieve the table of contents in one click. I just went here, I have gone to table of content and then I just give automatic table to option. So, automatically I have got the table. And after this, one more thing we are going to notice. That is, see these are all hyperlinks we said, right? So now, but when I go here in the word, I don't see that is a hyperlink. But when I go very closely, I can see control plus click. Now let me save this file. I'm going to save this file as PDF. File save as uh, maybe in downloads. And I'm going to save. Press file. And then I'm saving it. 
uh, oh sorry i will save it as pdf pdf okay so you uh, i'll save it like test file pdf and put it in documents in documents test file is the name of the file pdf is the type and then i am saving it now let me go to the uh, explorer yeah the file is being opened you can see test file dot pdf and look at it you have the hyperlink so I, I even i didn't go for pdf even pdf editor is there uh, wherein you can bring buttons and all but i did only simple thing so i'm able to navigate to multiple pages so what you can do is so you want to add a, a front page uh, for example see uh, let me push this into uh, next page insert page break and the first page you can have some images i'll pick some images from our presentation uh, maybe i'll take this image okay uh, like this cover page images also you can have images which you have created okay you can have some image and create like a book kind only so you can create and i can take some shapes and drawing something here so here i'm i'm drawing that shape here uh, you can pick the color how you want it you can add a text here you can say handbook on our programming you can select whatever the font you wanted increase the font size okay so now look at it it looks like more or less like a kind of book you can also keep your name here after this and when you say this it looks more professional Also. Right. So just a matter of alignment and now when you save this it looks more professional like a book like a material right so i'll save it one more time save us and i should make sure that in the computer i'll go for documents that is already one PDF file we have test file. I'm saving with the same name. Yeah. So you can see it looks like a uh, you know kind of neat material. You have the material already with you. Alignment you can adjust. You can adjust the space and everything. It looks like a kind of book or a material. Okay. So this is a simple way. Either I don't know whether you know it already or not, but I, I wanted to share. You know, mainly I wanted to tell the teachers who, uh, you know, don't belong to computer science, uh, don't take things very uh, difficultly. ICT is so simple. You have already materials which you just convert into some e-material. So what is the, uh, what I can do after converting this into an e-material? I can also show you. This is one of my, uh, you know, one of my blog which I have. If this is my uh, website. Uh, you can see my name is here. And you can see home, my classroom. Uh, training and consultancy what actually I'm doing and then open educational resources about and contact so when you click on this open educational resources you can see I have uploaded materials like this 
So anybody who want to access the material, you can just give the link to your student, right? Student, you can say that the uh, teacher is having a website, go to this particular page and then you download the material. So the, in the click, they can download. So now we have created this PDF. This PDF can be, yeah, this PDF can be uploaded in this website. So you can manually do it. You yourself can do it and the student can access this way. So this is what I have planned. So uh, is this the same way? Shall I proceed? Is it okay for you all? Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Proceed, ma'am. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Mo Mohana Pranav, any doubts? Any doubts? You you are you have raised your hand. Okay. So I'll proceed. Yes, Bhartina. Uh, Ma'am, ma I have a doubt. Uh, like yes, uh, when we select the levels, will it take the formatting, like the font size, or like I have seen when you have changed, when you have uh, removed that level two, it has become color, like black color. Black but color. as soon as you had put level two, it become oh. blue. So it is by default, or we can have the freedom to change the text size or the color or the yes, formatting. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can actually change. I'll show you here. See here. This is that level two, right? So what actually I have done when I was creating this document, it was black in color. So it was actually black. Then what I did this, I converted into level. Uh, I'll, show you. I'll remove this level. File references. Okay, do not show. This was the actual text we I had. So what is the first step? I did this. I made it as level two. Okay, and afterwards I have applied the color. Uh, uh, you know, after that also it was black on, only in the initial stage and then I went for applying this blue color and not only blue here you can see there is a gray shape. This also I have only applied. So you can apply whatever uh, the style you wanted. You want to make it in red color, anything you can do. Right? And after doing that, one more shortcut is there. If it is difficult, you leave it. Otherwise, one more shortcut. What is the shortcut is? In Microsoft Word, a, every text has its own style. The style includes font name, font color, font type, bold, italic, everything together we call it as a style. The style can be copied and pasted. So what do you mean by that? We generally do copy paste. How we will do? Control C, Control V, right? Now what I can do is, now look at this. I can select this by using the con uh, Control Shift C. Or you can see Format Painter. Just click on it. When you click on it, it becomes blue. It means that the style is copied. Now I am going here. Here can you see the code? I am going to use the brush. Now what happened to code now? It becomes red color and also it also becomes level 2. Can you notice that ma'am? Yeah ma'am, yeah, I got ah, it. Ah, same way I did. What I did is only one time I applied level 2 and then I made some color and font. Then after that, I have copied the style and wherever I required level 2, I just pasted the style. So I made it like a style, the color, font and everything. So now I have I have created one more topic in this uh, section 1. So that has to be reflected here, right? Here when you see 1, I can see only what is key test, but I don't see the score. So how do I bring that? Right click and then you can see there is an option, update field. So click on the update field and you can see update page number, update entire table. So click on the entire table, then the new option is also coming here. So can you see that now? Yeah, yeah ma'am. I got That's it, ma'am. Yeah. Means even every time we, we need not require to select and assign level 2. If we match ah, the property, automatically yes, it will take to level 2. Yes, ma'am. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Okay. You are right. You are right. Thank and, you. and you don't need to type it in the table of content again and again. Right? Yeah, so yeah, as yeah. I told you, teachers are already oh, packed with a lot of words. So these are the simple tricks we can use to create the content neatly because we wanted to have this perfect. All right. So in that case, this also will be helping us. So after this document also, we can keep working on the word file and you can update the table and convert it to PDF. So one time you had a small cover page and create a material. So every unit uh, ma'am can have 115. One, uh, for unit 1, file 2 for unit 2, like that also we can have or if we have 5 files 
and put together we can create one book also like this so it is easy for us to share it with our students right so uh, i'll continue here so this is what actually i was telling you right so um, yeah so this is a simple way so what actually we needed what was the most important thing how did we created the e content is first of all we should have content right so now when i showed you i had one file one document file already i had so first thing what we need is the content this next thing what we need is some kind of technology input is needed right the same microsoft word even i was using it for years but then this table of content option i got to know just two years back when i was doing my phd thesis work so that time only i have explored this so i wanted to share it with you all so thinking that it may be in many aspects so just a bit of technology with the software what we are actually using if you know that it is very quite easy to create a e content so uh, when i say content development so uh, uh, here i can divide into three things one is uh, content development then other one is technology so content development uh, team is nothing but subject matter experts in industry they use sme we, we each of uh, each teacher is a subject matter expert we have our own domain every teacher is good at something one teacher is good in c programming one teacher is good in financial accounting likewise every teacher has their own knowledge and they know their own shortcuts also right so in that case they can identify the content they can create a overview or a syllabus we can create and they can identify the list of topics topic wise materials and you can also include question bank if there are some quiz questions also we can include if this material is ready it may be in word format it may be in a uh, handwritten format or whatever it is once this is ready we can convert content transformer so the content is it can be in any format we are converting into a word file or a pdf file or anything any type of file we can convert and uh, this was a old scenario where we needed it experts who can create website who can create blogs or mobile application or video capturing but now i'm going to say you that you are going to become an expert you are going to become an it expert by creating this blog or website and upload this material right before that i wanted to show you some other pieces of information you can add now right now what we have done we can call it as course content because i don't have full subject i have only one unit so i can call it as course content like a bits and pieces or even video lectures so nowadays all teachers are familiar in capturing video and put it in youtube right so that video lectures we have then i will show you one more thing that is mobile books then audio language teachers they enjoy uh, you know narrating the things that actually make the students to understand the concepts more well than giving a reading material so that can be in a audio format right they call it as podcast all these things right so that can also be created and together we can have a ebook also right so yeah so this is one type of ebook uh, you know uh, uh, what you have it in a book you will have table of content and uh, when i click on i mean when i go to a particular topic i will get the details so in websites itself we can create like this so this can be called as a ebook so as i told you audio book is like some poem reading play etc so this one i don't know uh, some of your colleges you may be having so in our college uh, you know uh, like our vairamuthu sir said uh, in our college in our department we have a, a, a software development cell where uh, you know the students will join as like a club activity kind and we'll assign them some of the projects so uh, three years back we started this way Uh, we told them to uh, help in creating e contents so uh, you know what happened is the students were divided into uh, teams and then one team worked for this mobile book uh, they actually have learned mobile application development uh, during their course period so we have given them subject materials and we asked them to create a mobile apps so this is how they have created you could see here some sign things and all there it is a pdf document right and this is a word file 
and we have given materials for unit 1 2 3 4 5 like this and in that actually uh, this introduction to xml uh, when a student click on it the student will see uh, the uh, material with respect to unit 1 we have also included a page about in that we have added the teachers profile so this mo one mobile app when we have tried uh, you know three years back then what happened is the students themselves they found it very interesting uh, they told us ma'am you give all the materials in the beginning we will create an app and we will use that app for studying because most of the times we are missing material so finally when we are giving something they are missing and they are more comfortable in using the materials in mobile rather than uh, you know in the system or in the hard copy so they told us ma'am you give materials like that so it was a very successful project for us and the, uh, the student team, they have almost developed 30 books in one particular year itself. It's not only for computer science. They have uh, they made it to open. They accepted projects from the entire college. So even for commerce binary, even for humanities binary, they accepted the projects and they have developed, uh, you know, 30 mobile apps like this. And we made this available in our college uh, open educational resources repository. So it is completely open. Even if you go to our website, you can see this mobile applications are available free to download and use. So this is one way. Uh, but for this, actually, we need a team, right? We have actually trained the team since we are into computer science. We trained our students team. So maybe you can give a small idea to uh, you know the uh, students who are interested in doing this. So just give a material and convert into a e-content right yeah so uh, then uh, the traditional video lecture uh, so it is not necessary that video lecture has to be recorded in a studio it can be classroom recording or i can use normal uh, uh, computer screen recording now also there is a recording happening right so that can be used as a video lecture the captured video can be uploaded either in your college youtube channel or the teacher themselves can have their own YouTube channel and it can be uploaded. So I was talking about the course contents which we have done with PDF, Word, even PowerPoint also you can convert into PDF. So now we have the content, we have converted into e-content, but that has to be uploaded. It has to go to website, triple W. The website when it goes only, we can call it like a resources should go to the repository. So which repository it can go? So there is a general terminology called as open educational resources. Open educational resources are nothing but they are freely accessible, openly licensed to text, and they are useful for teaching, learning, assessing for everything. And they generally have publicly accessible materials and resources for user to use it, remix it, improve, and distribute. Okay, so for doing all these things, we, uh, as I told you, there are a lot of tools, okay, uh, for tools for re re uh, creating the diagrams, tools for screen capturing, for, uh, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow I think we are going to have purely on evaluation, like how to conduct a quiz, how to conduct an online test. That way we have plenty of tools, podcast tools, we have uh, image editing tools, but conferencing, text-to-speech tools. Uh, storytelling tools like that we have general category and these tools will help us to convert and after converting we are saying that we have to publish right open access so is it necessary that always it has to be open not necessary sometimes it can go with the limited access limited access is nothing but people who are having link only they can access for example, uh, ma'am was telling, uh, Bharti ma'am was telling about Google Classroom. So whatever the notes ma'am is keeping in Google Classroom, that is accessible to the student, but not to everyone, right? If we want to access, we have to join ma'am's classroom, then we will also get the accessibility. Similarly, there is one thing which we, we, we all heard about it, learning management system or LMS. So the LMS also has the capability to hold the content and give it to the student and teacher with a restricted access. Or you can also keep it in your intranet server. Okay, so this is limited access. And then open access is you can keep it in some international portal 
or get e resources so the contemporary resources this is what we were telling one is classroom response system virtual classroom learning management system this is the keyword now everybody are talking about it in our college we are using moodle to manage the classroom so what about lms how it is different from uh, your google classroom we are comfortable with google classroom and other virtual classroom why i should go for lms so lms has one feature extra apart from your google classroom but that is the biggest feature which we can call it as administration so what do you mean by administration so administration is nothing but everything in one platform and moreover in google classroom suppose if principal wants to see what is happening then they also should be part of the classroom right so the uh, t uh, so otherwise if principal is creating the classroom he can add the teachers so that is how generally we configure the classrooms in the college but here it is much more flexible in a learning management system configuring the classes assigning the teachers assigning the students and then also scheduling the tasks scheduling the classes and conducting assignments conducting the test also tracking the progress whether the students are completing the lecture or not so we get notified whether the students have completed or not if at all they have not completed how much percentage they have done all these details we can get to know right so uh, at this moment i want to pass and ask uh, any uh, any other uh, learning management system which you have implemented in your colleges can you please share about it yeah i'll pass a while and i want to hear from you and i want to hear from you what type of learning management systems we are using in our college and this is again airmuttu yes sir uh, we have our own uh, learning management system portal uh, yes, called the vtop vat to the top position okay. so that is what the name is and it is uh, having restricted access because you were talking about uh, creating the contents on our own right so it matters a lot to us because you know finding time is very difficult for us as a teacher to handle one hour session we need to prepare at least three hours because nowadays students are more smart right so here comes a comes or here comes question of originality because you know some people uh, when they try to prefer the e contents they used to cut and copy from several uh, available resources and they used to claim the authorship that that should be much carefully dealt with because when we say we have developed so and so contents e contents and we have made it as public you know uh, nac people nac assessors once uh, they you they they are eagerly looking for such kinds of a uh, uh, trap So we should not be into the trap on our own. Because, you know, very very important point is originality. So, e content, as you said, open educational resources. It is also possible, but uh, we encourage the faculty members to do that also. Additionally, for students' access, we are having our own portal. Apart, we used to have Moodle as part of our learning process. In addition to that, we have developed a three or four platform. for individual courses based on the courses in chennai campus and velour campus and we also encourage students as you said uh, your college is encouraging students for uh, developing mobile app and uh, already as i said we have some concept called additional learning so wherein students are encouraged to involve in such uh, activities other than their regular academic activities and they they are also going to get some marks awarded as part of their internals in some courses so you are uh, doing uh, some kinds of credits and we are uh, facilitating them to earn additional marks as part of their internal assessments so this is also part of our uh, process but i just wanted to uh, just remind that we should be very careful when we are preparing the e content because copyrights and intellectual property rights plays a major role uh, because where nac will be very much serious about it yes, thank, yes, you. Sir. thank you thank you thank you so much sir thank you sir for reminding and for uh, encouraging all of us to create our own original content 
instead of copying and pasting uh, you know we need to focus more on it uh, you know match match not only match even nowadays even our students are also uh, they will catch hold of it they'll say uh, you know uh, this particular site the same material is available right so we are actually monitored everywhere when i say e content or anything like earlier the classroom uh, you know has a boundary of walls but when you go for a virtual classroom and virtual uh, content and virtual materials now you see there is no boundary and the eyes you know uh, uh, who are watching us are become we we ourselves doesn't know how many people are watching us how many people are looking into our materials and how many will claim all these things so thank you sir for reminding that uh, but also nac is encouraging us to share open educational resources uh, because uh, those who are working for iqac i think you may be knowing that uh, so in aqar that is every year we need to submit to nac that how many open educational resources we have how many e resources which are open they are asking very specifically with the webbing so that's where we have actually we started working on it so uh, you know uh, uh, that's the reason i thought of telling you that we can have in our own web page because if we are posting in the college website then it is seriously uh, you know different thing even in our college repository what we have is we have a team uh, you know where we need to uh, suppose if i want to upload my material in the uh, college repository then i have to go through a proper channel i have to send my material the material will be verified and validated because content also has to be verified and moreover it has to be checked for the plagiarism and other things so these things will be verified and after that only it will go to the repository even the same thing with the respect to video lecture also because only that same department people will be knowing whether the contents are correct or not so that should be a proper mechanism of verification and validation before we upload in the college channel or wherever our college na name is being tagged with a professor's name so obviously it's right thing so what we thought is we uh, you know suggested we uh, but then sometimes the teachers may uh, feel uh, you know uh, you know uh, uh, that i have put some effort i've created something so what in that case you can do with the teachers also need a hit rate what do you mean by hit rate is visibility the teacher visibility also should go high so i am not only teaching for my college my name should be visible to other colleges also i need to share my knowledge to everyone so that is one of the uh, milestone uh, or benchmark by nac so the teacher ha ha visibility should be increased how can i increase the visibility so it should be open some not only my students somebody who is seeing admiring my uh, video in the uh, youtube and seeing that this is helpful for them so they will start liking it and sharing it so there is one fear of uh, people one group of people may misuse but there is some other efficient teachers who have excellent materials so it is a worry about copyright and other things but it can be properly put it in our own channel in that case what happens is uh, you can attract people uh, number of viewers and other things and nowadays we know very well there are some monetary benefits are also there so recently we have we, we are uh, we have organized a lecture to our teachers encouraging them to promote the views how they can promote the views of their channel what type of contents can be selected how that can be posted right so kind of these kind of things when uh, you know after, this is the next level after you create the material post it and after we post the material now we have to work on promoting the material so that is the next level right so uh, we can work on that level also right so i can go into it so sir was also talking about the lms uh, so here in our college also we are using moodle so the advantage of uh, moodle uh, uh, you know compared to our uh, google classroom and other things is you have a special login for teacher and student with the different privileges so what do you mean by privileges the functionality so the teacher can log in upload the class material conduct the classes also conduct the evaluation student can log in participate in the lecture download the material apart from that is something called as administrator so uh, i'm shall i add some points yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma so in our college also we are having a common repository and that is in our college website itself as a part of Seattle portal. 
and the center for technology enhanced learning that is in our college they are monitoring and all the activities you have already said and also we are maintaining a digital anjak digital as a channel where before posting the video content there is a scrutiny scrutiny for checking all the things that is specified by dr vairam so college uh, institutions from participants from various institution and uh, e content development as well as making it as available to all is a must under the criterion 2 so you have to think of it in your institution you have you have to prepare the e content in any format video audio text or even ppt and make it as a uh, centralized one accessible to your students faculty and also for others so that is my humble suggestion thank you thank you ma'am yeah ma'am uh, you know in the beginning of the session itself as i quoted uh, the, uh, the most appreciated uh, a component in anjak website is teacher i really love the way uh, they have actually showcased the teachers videos uh, you know uh, i think uh, you know the a great technical team behind it so appreciation to all the team and uh, this is a nice idea like we can have reviewers from outside also it's a great idea great input to all of us now Thank and you. one more thing ma'am now from 2019 itself we have get into object based education outcome based education obe so we are the first one implemented in arts and science colleges engineering colleges and other technical institutes are following and for the obe our own implementation but that is based on the guidelines given by the ugc as well as now now M mca they are going for mba aggregation they are following going to following the guidelines of nb and our college website is having all the components for measuring the outcome of obe as well as apart from academic excellence by the students or ac academic outcome we are having a implementation for measuring the skill component also non academic skills so that is also the two fold of the coin so we are measuring that also so our college website is also having such a, a, a powerful one for measuring all those attainments so dr laran sir is doing all the work so obe as well as uh, that is also part of the criterion too so all the institution we have to get get into that also thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you thank you for the input uh, thank you for uh, bringing that awareness also uh, so i i think yeah every every college has started working on it and not only for the nat so that is what actually i was telling it uh, so it is not only for the nat even for our students also so even our students are also nowadays started asking right my uh, you know my students uh, during this lockdown time uh, they'll say uh, ma'am please uh, uh, you know start your uh, Uh, you know what do you say? Man, start recording, upload it in YouTube. Later we want to see. Sometimes the signal may be lost, so I want to listen to it. Or, uh, you know, after some time. So even if, if I forget, the moment when I start taking the class, my students will say, "Ma'am, please record it and please upload it." So it becomes you know part and parcel of our life. So the students themselves, you know, they are looking at uh, teachers to be a super teacher by incorporating the YouTube and then. sharing the information in the form of uh, you know either through website or some other means so uh, i uh, what i was suggesting is anyway you are giving all the ppt and pdf and all so maybe you can you can uh, mention the references you can put a disclaimer saying that these materials are collected from these are the references and maybe we are using it for teaching purpose so we can mention that and maybe we can think about sharing it also so one thing is as uh, vairamuthu sir said you should not simply copy and paste but since we are all you know uh, teachers for years we know very well and we generally customize the contents we customize the content by looking from different books and then different materials so obviously it is not only the max expectation it becomes a part of student expectation also so as i promised you i'm going to show you the next demonstration so we have created one pdf file i'm going to show you how can we have a simple website and how can we add this file into the website so uh, let's have a, a minutes to see so to uh, to do this website building 
uh, what and all we can keep it ready so first time you are creating your own website or blog so what and all we can keep ready so i suggest you this is this is like a ingredient before you cook right so uh, not only for teaching material i will say that uh, you know even for outsiders also uh, the teacher visibility uh, you know will be increased when you have your own website or blog uh, you know you can keep your specialization area even if you uh, regarding your research interest regarding the projects which you are working on all these things you can have a regular posting in your blog or website so creating website or blog is not only for computer science all the department can claim to work on it so how i started doing is when i started uh, i just uh, took my one of my photographs and then one classroom activity uh, related to that i have taken some information some wallpapers that and all is optional whatever we want and keep a short biography of yourself keep some teaching activity right we will have some innovative activity even uh, we were talking about student centric teaching methods in the beginning and some of your research contribution everything you keep ready uh, you know before we start with it so uh, after keeping this ready so what actually i can plan so i'm going to plan for a website how it has to come so i'm planning to have one home page and then one profile page where the teachers profile will be given and uh, talking about the classroom and then you can also have some uniqueness either research contribution or some learning materials or something related to the consultancy which we accept and one contact page home page and contact page by default it is actually a must apart from that you can have one profile page and something related to your teaching since we are a teacher we can talk something about teaching and all any of this it's not mandatory to have all but whichever it is needed we can keep it right okay so uh, we are going to start with that so yeah so i am going to use uh, google sites and i'm going to show you um yeah yeah yes sir jaisalan sir also asked how to do it practically yes sir i'm here i have come okay yeah so this is uh, my account and i'm going to uh, you know click on this when you click on this you see there is something called as the uh, sites okay so this is what you call it as google sites to create the google site you need only google account when you have a google account you can create a google site some people if you say google site is not there sometimes a blogger may be, may be there okay so uh, i have google site so i'm going to work on it and you can see some of the examples which i have demonstrated in the earlier classes also it is there by default now let me go here this is like when you see this what do you feel this is exactly like uh, how to create all microsoft things so i'm going to create one blank website so i'm clicking on blank okay so this is a blank site okay yeah so now what i'm going to do the first thing i'm going to add a site uh, I, i'm going to add a name so i'm going to say um uh, i don't know Okay. And what is the page title we want? So we can say this is going to be something related to learning resources. So let me keep it as learning resources. And I can when you type this, you can see uh, the font, bold, italic, all these. Can you see this here? Okay. Uh, please respond. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ah, thank you. So here, yeah, you can pick any font whichever you want, and then you can also change the size of it. Fourteen, eighteen, thirty-six. Okay. So this is what I have kept, and there is some image. You want to change the image? Yes, there is an option. You can click on change image, and you can go for uploading image. So uh, I don't know whether I have it in the system. Pictures or something like that. Okay, so I'm just clicking on it, and you can see the image is there in the image format. So we can have the image whatever we want, and now from here we are starting. 
if you want if you don't want the image you can click on it for deleting and the delete option also you don't need to worry just look around that options will be there and you move when i click here also i see there is a delete option edit option so any object when we click the edit and delete option will come we can delete edit as well as delete okay so now after this what i want to have uh, i said we can have general introduction so we can have some general introduction i don't have any write up so let me copy from here in brief i'll take some data something because you will have when you are developing you will have right so that things you can copy and you can paste okay when you are pasting how you want it you can change it how uh, what should be the format all these things so uh what is Test. Okay, and I'm keeping it title. Title is big, and also you can click on it, bold, italic, and these I these text also. What type of font we want it? Times New Roman, twenty four, twenty four is too big. I can keep changing, posting. Okay, so this is one content I have. Okay, I can keep adding. Now let's see. First, we we are not act, uh, actually having any uploading things right now. We have just created one title we have given, uh, and then we have kept some items. Now let's see how this will be looking like. Mm -hmm. So there is an option called as publish. So when I click on publish, now it is asking the address. What is the address? Address is how people can access this particular item. So I'm going to say it is by default Aruna hyphen baby hyphen K. Okay, and here it is saying who can view my site. By default, since I'm creating under my college, it is saying it is available only in fifty twenty. Okay, so I'm giving publish. So when we view publish, then you can go for view publish the site. So this is how the website will look like. The website does not have any menu. It is a plain website right now. We started. We don't have anything else. So plain website. This is how this will be coming in. Uh, you know, in the viewing page. So uh, it since it is in Christianity, it's a like sites dot google dot com. Slash Christianity dot com Aruna hyphen Deepi it is coming. Otherwise, it will be a uh, very simple directly. For example, this one I have developed with WordPress. So Aruna Deepi Kanapuri dot WordPress dot com. This belongs to the domain WordPress. Like that, the domain name also will come to see. So one simple thing we have done. But it is we need some more menus we need, and also we need uh, to upload right. Here, uh, this way, we wanted to share our resources to show our video, right? You have your own YouTube channel. That video also we wanted to show. How that can be done? So let's start doing it. And here you can see insert text box. This is what we have done. And there is the place you can include images. You can have drive into drive options, and then some layouts are also given. And here you have plenty of things. Now look at that. There is something called collapsible test. So what is collapsible? So now let me say area of interest, or I can say domain interest. Domain interest. So I can say data science and analytics. And I can say. You can also adjust the font and other things that we told you. Um, so now, what I have done is I have added this. Now I have added one more. So again, if I simply give view publish the site. This will not come. It is not saved. Okay. 
So when this will be saved, again we should go for publish. So when we click on publish, now it is asking us, see this is the draft right now we are working on. What is earlier is this one. Still do you want to publish? Let's click on publish. Let's click on publish and after that click on view publish site. So now you can see something called domain interest. Click on it, you see the two options. This is called collapsible text, like drop down. When you click on it, you will see the option. So what we can do, we can have multiple subjects named like this. And you can have the notes on the graph. So that's the idea, right? On clicking this, it can open one particular material. So that way also it is possible, right? Let's come here. So, and then you can see table of content is there. Image carousel is nothing but multiple images run like a slideshow, button, divider, placeholder. So now let's move on to the important things. Can you see YouTube? Yes. So click on YouTube. When you click on YouTube, it is asking you to, uh, you know, which you, video you wanted to bring in here. So uh, maybe you have created your own channel. Now uh, let me find out my channel. some of my videos are appearing here so i can see uh webster operation okay let me pick this video and then select so you you don't need to go to youtube channel get the video nothing so you can just search here itself and then you can pick this and then select so what happened is that video has brought it like a object here okay so the object is here so uh, the recorded lectures are available this way I have uploaded. So uh, one more time let me give publish. Then again I can see there is a graph. This is a new thing which we have added. Give publish. And then go to uh, this. View publish site. And you can see that video is available. You can click on it. You can view it in the placeholder. Or you can view it in the YouTube itself. I, I think uh, there, is, there is something here. If you can, when you click on it, it will open in. Yeah, if you click on it, it will open in YouTube video itself. So directly you can see it goes to the channel. Fine. So this way, whatever the videos you have uploaded after the class, you can add it here. Day one, day two, lecture videos. So we are not uploading material. We don't want to upload material. Uh, maybe uh, checking the plagiarism issue or something. What we can do, we can take some videos on a basis, unit by unit, and we can give a link. Right? I hope all of us are having some of the videos. That videos can be linked this way. Uh, are you able to follow? Let me check in chat window. Any doubts? Okay. Can we take yes, some? Uh, okay, Jai Freelan sir, dynamic web also uh, do this same one, functional processing. Uh, Jai Freelan sir, can you tell me what exactly? I didn't get you. Jai Freelan sir? Hello. Jay yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, sir. Actually, sir, many of the uh, of uh -huh. uh, when the web application, uh, you have all the doubt. Uh, same thing, uh, doing functional process. So, we have a process in the back option, being stored in a data message. I mean, you wanted to put it in database and fetching that way? Code level. Yes. Sir, uh, uh, I'm talking about. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So I, uh, I'm talking in the preliminary level. I have not gone to that level. I'm just saying the simple way of like putting all our lecture materials. As you said, we can make our web more dynamic also. We have a lot more tools, we have a lot more websites also that can be Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so uh, sir, sir, 
developer wanted to make this website more functional, more dynamic by uh, fetching from somewhere, by fetching and displaying it here. Yes, it is possible. Yes, we can do it in the next uh, level by level. We can actually include, right? So right now we, we know how to create one page. Now, how do I include more pages? Now, this is one page. You assume this is the content page. We want to create one more page. So what we can do, click on pages. When you click on pages, you see home page is available, right? There is home page. So what you can do is you can add sub pages. You can add sub pages here, right? And also, suppose you want to create a, uh, uh, yeah, when I gave sub page, what happened? There is a new page come, which has the similar uh, image of the home page. So, and you can also see there is a menu automatically came. Earlier, there were no menus because we had only one page. Now, there is a new page. So, now let me change the content of this page. Go to property. In the property, you can say, uh, that this is uh, about, about, we can simply say about me. Now, okay. And you can see in the menu there is about me. If I, can I create one more page? Yes. I can go add another sub page and I can say this is contact page. Now, now I have three pages. I have not done anything. I added two pages and I'm clicking on publish. And then I am again and clicking publish. And then I'm going for view publish site. And you can see this is the contact page. And you see there is home page. Click on the home page. This is our home page. And in that itself, you can see about me and contact page. These two pages we have not yet edited now. So these pages we can actually do editing, right? So come back here. Now this is the output we have seen. I'll close this. And here we are. So now again, like how we have done on home page, how we added, the same way we can add. So we wanted to include that PDF file. Yes, we can do. So here in about me, suppose, uh, suppose you don't want the text box at all. So click on it and delete. It will go. Okay, and here you can see insert again. Come back here and text box. Yes, so we can say about me, and you can add the contents. We have already contents, for example, repeated. So, here are some things there. So, you can you can just take something from here. Okay, you can keep your college name and other things. So we can take some content here, some random content I'll put here. So the same way we can have something. And we wanted to see how we can have our files, right? So here in Google Sites, what, how you can share a file is, you can share the file uh, either in the form of docs, in the form of slides or sheets. Even you can share your forms, charts, location you can share, calendar, YouTube placeholder like this we can have. So if you want to share a document file, you should make sure that the file is already uploaded in your Google Drive. So my file is already uploaded in the Google Drive and then uh, maybe, okay, something, okay, I'll take this document, then I'm giving insert. So the document appears in the placeholder. So this is what you call it as placeholder. So this has come in the placeholder and and you can see we will publish 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 and then you publish the site. So we can see the document is available in the placeholder and now it is all in your hands. You can allow them to download or simply view. Here you can see that printing option is there and then I can open, edit, all the options are there. If the document is already restricted, if you are restricted in downloading, restricted in printing, 
they can simply view the document and then they can close it and go. So document uh, settings, the privacy settings has to be done in your Google Drive itself. After that, you can share the document in the Google sites. Since it is Google site, it is showing, it is giving the placeholder also. But if you take, uh, uh, you know, our WordPress, it does not have any placeholder like this. Only there is a download option. So I can show you how we can actually more effectively, uh, I mean, more effectively we can do. Um, I can show you one more website which uh, we have. Yeah. So this is my friend's website which I have created. So initially I just created and gave, and then later on, Mam has added many more things. So you can see here. And you have published the site. So she has given the subject name like this programming in C data structure design. So when you click on uh, programming in C, uh, so she has added some descriptions and then she has also given uh, the notes also like this click read. And she has given the PDF file also this way. This is available in her Google Drive and she has given uh, privileges to download also. So it is all up to us. Like how we are giving. So the same way for the other subjects also. She has added her video lecture. Right? So we can have, we can keep the study materials this way and we can give it to them. So one method, or like this is the general thing. Uh, if any specifically, if you want, maybe you can tell because I think we have uh, uh, you know, 10 more minutes. So you could tell me how specifically or anything you want. Yes, Bharati, I would like to ask, like, if there is any option, notification when I, option for notification to, uh, like, uh, the student can receive when I upload any new material? Ah, yes, ma'am. What I, uh, see, I have, uh, in the Google Drive, by default, I have given a restricted, uh, uh, I mean, what do you call, restricted uh, uh, UV. So what happens is the moment when they are trying to access, I get a mail notification that uh, uh, the person wants to download. So whether are you accepting? So then we can only release the material. Now. It's not, uh, if you want to hold it that way, you can do it. Or you okay. want to keep it simply open, that also is possible. I, mm -hmm. But in my side, I have kept, I should get an email notification. Okay, ma'am. Uh, no, actually, I want to know from like the student side, whether the student the notification if I upload new material? Uh, that actually, uh, uh, they need to subscribe. I think in Google site that is not there. Uh, but uh, in WordPress, there is an option that they can actually subscribe. If it is a blog, I think here, uh, this is a blog actually. In this blog, actually they can give subscribe. When they give subscribe, whatever I am uploading in my blog, they get a notification. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, that's what I, in blog at least they can, if some material I upload, yeah, they can yes, discuss there. But yes, uh, when the, I do in website, they cannot, student cannot yes, discuss yes. among You can keep a combination. So if you take in this case, I have, this is actually a website, but in that one page I have made it like a blog. Okay. So that way also you can combine the things and then you can use it. Now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you have doubts, you can post it in the chat window or you can unmute yourself and you can answer. It takes humility to seek feedback. It takes wisdom to understand it, analyze it and appropriately act on it. Feedback session. Participants can provide the oral feedback or post the feedback on chat box. Yes, uh, I would like to thank organizers uh, Dr. Vasanti and our team for this uh, session and uh, I really appreciate uh, Dr. Arna Devi uh, who delivered a wonderful uh, session with some hands-on experience so it was really good and that all, I, I, I like very much the last part web, website web page design thank you ma'am mm -hmm. it was quite good and uh, Thank you. Nothing else to add with. Uh, awesome team, I'm requesting you 
let the participants know about attendance and feedback so that uh, they stay for the entire duration. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your feedback. I have shared the feedback link for today's session. Participants, kindly fill and send. Thank you. Thank you, Arnadi, ma'am, for your informative and excellent session along with hands-on training. It's really a very useful session for the participant. I assure I thank you, ma'am, wholeheartedly. Thank you very much for joining with you one more time. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all. It's my immense pleasure to propose to what are thanks on this occasion. First of all, I would like to thank our college management and our dynamic principal, Dr. C. Asok sir, for giving the permission to conduct this FTP program. Next, I would like to thank our head of the department, Dr. J. Jabakumari Pula Vasandi, ma'am, and the organizing secretary, Ms. K. Meena, ma'am, for arranging this type of program. Next, I would like to thank today's chief guest, Dr. K. Arna Devi, ma'am, for delivering the informative lecturer on innovative digital tools for teaching and learning. Thank you, ma'am. Next, I would like to thank Mendy College and the other college participants. Finally, I thank our department staff members and the student volunteers for excellent involvement for this program. Thank you and thank you one and all. Thank you, ma'am.